let me introduce our next speaker. Uh, Randy Gerber is a uh, wealth manager who specializes in first generation entrepreneurs. He's an entrepreneur himself. He's created quite a business by looking into the future and helping his clients look into the future. And he's gonna talk about how our decisions today will affect us. Welcome, Randy. Hello. Can you uh, hear me and see me? We can, yes. Perfect. So um, first and foremost, uh, thank you, Jeff, for doing this. I think it's uh, fantastic, and I think your timing on it was perfect. Um, it's much needed. Uh, I also want to have a special thank you for all the healthcare workers out there um, doing their best. It's, um, it's a tough job right now, and, and uh, I know all of us appreciate everything you do. So uh, we need to support those folks as much as possible. And part of that, obviously, is continuing for us to be safe and to be smart and, and make it easier on them to do their job. So uh, hopefully we all can do that. Uh, and, you know, this title of this event, uh, Adversity to uh, Prosperity, I, I find interesting and good. I, 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 um, we are certainly living in an adverse situation today. Um, I do wonder what prosperity looks like in the future. Um, and I wonder how that's going to evolve for people as time goes on. The, um, the, a little bit about, let's see here, is that right? Yeah. So I think that's right. So the, um, we work exclusively with uh, first generation entrepreneurs and what we really help them do is grow their business with purpose. Um, and we have a dedicated process to do that. You, you know, it's interesting that I think about today what purpose means and what, what it will mean in the future uh, more than ever. And, and so, many, um, so many businesses today have been shuttered and are sitting there idle for right now, waiting to open back up for some point in the future. And I think now is a really good time to, to revisit what, is, what does purpose mean and uh, what does growth rate mean as well. Um, we'll talk about that here in a second. The, um, my agenda today is to define growth, identify proper growth, and dispel some myths and, and, uh, for entrepreneurs and people running businesses going forward. Um, one of the things we talk about regularly with our clients is the, the ride of a first-generation entrepreneur. And, you kind of we this this is internal to us, and if you look at what we have here, that there's a, in the beginning when you start your stage, you have this intox or start your business, you have an intoxicating feeling, and it's one of the best feelings out there. You're excited, it's yours, you're doing something different, you're innovative, uh, you're unusual, you're bucking the trend, um, and all of a sudden you realize that this is really hard, and 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 we all know that uh, being an entrepreneur is is hard, and. Sometimes you, you end up feeling trapped because you're, you're so far along that you can't stop, you can't get out, but you are in fact trapped or you feel trapped at least. And, and oftentimes at this stage, it's, it's a brute force feeling or a brute force effort you have to, to do to get through the trap stage. And, and, and you have people in your life that are naysayers, not that they're, they're trying to be naysayers, but rather... Um, they, they love you and they want you to win and they want you to, they want you to do well. They don't know how to help you because being an entrepreneur is such an unusual, lonely place uh, as a generalization. That's one of the things that our firm does for people is create the ecosystem of being an entrepreneur. <clears throat> but once you get through the brute force piece of it, often you, you can, or you're going through it, I should say, there, you, you do begin to see a light at the end of the tunnel where like, okay, I, I, I can see how this is going to end here, how the world will go on with this. And, and as you go through the light in the tunnel, you have lots of emotions. You can see in the graph that, uh, um, you know, from the standpoint, I'm all in, I'm trapped, conviction, I'm burning out. Um, and then, you know, the business begins to accelerate and, you know, accelerate in the, in the way that Jim Collins talks about it. And then you grow into a, sustain, a sustainable stage. Um, and what we've learned over time, and we've been doing this now for almost 30 years and work with over uh, 200 first generation entrepreneurs that the cycle repeats itself where, you know, you, you think you're there and you're intoxicated and then all of a sudden you, you go to the next level again with your business and uh, you start over. 
And I definitely feel right now that a lot of us probably are feeling like we're in the, we're in the trap stage, that we're trapped based on, on what's happening in the, in the world with people's health. We're trapped in some respects um, with what some of our states are mandating. Uh, we're trapped by uh, sometimes how our employees are feeling, uh, trapped financially, of course. You know, this has had a profound impact on lots and lots of businesses, large and small, and lots of families, large and small. So, uh, you know, one of the things I'm wondering is, is today one of these times where brute force is going to get us through? And um, I, I think there's, there's an element of that for sure. The, um, and so we often, whenever we're, we're meeting with our clients, we ask them to the rank themselves, where are they on a one to 10 scale? And I'd ask you, you know, where are you right now? You know, where, where, were you, where were you two months ago on this scale? And, and where are you today? And, um, you know, I do believe that there's an enormous opportunity for, um, for you to get, you know, to really reinvent your business and reinvent uh, your relationship with your business and, and talk about or think about purpose. What does growth with purpose mean uh, in, a, in a new paradigm? And what does prosperity mean uh, in a new paradigm as well? The um, entrepreneurs know they have to grow or they die, they know it. And we've seen so many folks over time where that's the case, they either are going to grow or gonna die. And, and one of the challenges that we see is that they grow for growth's sake. They don't, they don't think about the right rate of growth. And one of the, and it's very counterintuitive, particularly for businesses that are starting out or newer businesses, that they feel they need to grow, <clears throat> take any type of business at all to have revenue. Um, and they don't really understand or are unaware of that, how growth, um, growth sucks time, growth sucks energy, uh, sucks bandwidth, and, and it certainly um, sucks money. When you're growing organically, it's expensive. And, and so one of the things that we really try to get people to think about when they're growing their business is, what, you know, what are the financial implications of growing? And what, what are the financial implications of growing rapidly? What does it do to your people? And, you know, right now is one of these times we look at the strain on, on what this virus has done to people is unbelievable. And, and not only unbelievable in terms of the amount of strain, but people are handling it differently. And uh, a lot of folks, um, I think that, that patience is a super critical um, uh, uh, trait we have to have right now because everybody's dealing with this differently. And that there's no, there's no right way or wrong way outside of being safe. And, and so, you know, I hope people can show some grace for this period of time. And, and I think they are in general. Americans always rally when it's all said and done. Um, but but the, the, the strain of growth on people. So we have this kind of kooky situation right now where, you know, entrepreneurs are trying to grow their business or in some cases keep their business in business. And there's a strain around that, around, the, the, around keeping yourself in business and the financial strain. And then there's a the health strain that's, that's going well, too. And so it's an unusual time and very difficult. Execution risk, boy, has that changed too. I mean, execution risk is something that is always an issue for growing businesses when you're trying to grow a business. Um, but execution risk today is even harder with uh, all the people working from home or working remotely, um, businesses disconnected and not able to communicate the way they did before. Uh, and so I think um, it's a big piece of how we go forward. With, and what are your execution risks of growth? quality of your product, and then of course, the opportunity cost of thinking strategically versus tactically. And that's probably the one big piece of where we are today. And that is we have a really unusual opportunity to think about your business strategically versus tactically. Um, I, I would like to think that this whole situation has caused us all to stop and take pause and really reflect, you know, what. What is important? Where are we going? You know, what does prosperity look like? Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I've been thinking about a lot lately is that that this virus, you know, even after a, a vaccine and after they develop medicines for to cure symptoms of this, um, you know, that the, the the implications are here for a long time. That I know myself, I'm already thinking about okay. I, you know, this virus isn't going away in two months. We, the state of Ohio might open up for business in two months, but it's not going away in two months. The virus isn't. So we have to learn how to be safe. Um, and one of the things that, you know, when you think about safe, safe is 
not just physically safe, we have to be emotionally safe. Um, we have to be financially safe. And, and ideally somewhere along the, the way, find some time for fun and laughter too. And there's been, we've been overwhelmed with negativity uh, the last few weeks and, and probably will be for the next few weeks, frankly. Um, this is a time to sit down and really revisit and what business do you want to have going forward? And what does safe look like? Uh, what does fun look like? And, and so the, you know, at, at this point, this is the true test of the culture of your organization. And uh, I hope all the people who own businesses in this audience have well-written, well-documented values for your company that you, you live on a regular basis. Uh, and the business lives day to day. And, and you know, this is a great time to assess how your employees truly living your company values today. And <laughs> if the answer is no, then I think you have to ask yourself, do you have the right set of values for your business? Uh, do you have the right employees for your business? And, 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 or is there a way to articulate uh, the values in a fashion um, that, that makes sense going forward? And if, if this is a time when you realize you have employees who don't fit your values, uh, so if your values aren't right, fix them and, and be reflective of that. Hopefully it's not a knee jerk reaction to what's happening. That's, you know, people often want to um, uh, fix things quickly. And I do feel these, this is one of these moments where people have to be very thoughtful about what's coming down. But what does the future look like? And in terms of the future, you know, I, as we think about this and advising our clients, I, I, I see three separate periods of time. I think there's a future, which is, the next two to three months, and some of that's going to be dictated by the governments, and some of that's dictated by what's happening with uh, small business um, programs that we have, and I'll, some of it may just be, uh, you know, survival and, and solving issues through brute force. Uh, but then I think there's a two-year, a two-year future, and this is where uh, I think there's so much innovation coming. I think that there's a, a chance, an opportunity for all of us to revisit our, our businesses, to reset our businesses. Um, to think about what does safe look like? What does purpose look like? And, and, and you know, one of the interesting things about what's going to happen in this country, there's been so much money sitting on the sidelines for so long looking to invest in companies and invest in solutions. And, and now we have this whole new set of problems uh, that we, we, we had, but we didn't realize we had uh, three months ago, four months ago, that there'll be solutions for it. And you know, somebody's gonna figure out how to develop a, a smoke bomb that you detonate in a hotel room or an airplane and it kills all viruses on site. Somebody's gonna figure out how to build a car or uh, build um, an airplane where there's virus-free services. There's, there's so much innovation that's gonna come uh, and we have tons of money in this country to solve that problem. And you know, one of the other good things about the timing, I mean, it's bad we're going through this, right? It's very bad for those who are dying, very bad for those who are fighting the fight. You know, the fact that it did happen though, that our country was in, in a very strong position going into it with respect to unemployment at 50 year lows and the banking system as strong as it was. So if we're gonna fight this fight and win this fight on the flip side, the timing was good to do it. <clears throat> um, so so I, I, the third bucket of time is past two years. And I think that's a murky. Uh, window. I think the past two years is hard to see right now because there's so many changes that are going to come that are long term from the standpoint of what does a safe business look like? What does technology really do long term? Uh, technology is great and it has a big part in, in the future, but it doesn't replace intimacy. It doesn't replace critical conversations. Um, and human beings still have a need for that. So there's going to be some balance around how you use technology and business going forward. Um, and particularly when you're talking about your, your leadership team, how that happens. So, so back to your organization, looking at the screen here, the, um, you know, what is your true culture of your organization today? Are your values accurate? And if, and if it isn't, this is a great time to trim those people who aren't good fits for you. There's plenty of programs out there to help them. Um, never waste a good crisis with opportunity. Um, and, and, and make your company better. Your employees, too, that leave you will find better places that are better homes for them if, in fact, they're not living your values. Uh, one of the things I've always said that it's, it's important to have a great alumni organization. Just because somebody doesn't fit well with your group doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means that they, they, they're not a good fit in your organization. They can be a terrific fit in a different organization somewhere else. And there's so much disruption in the labor market today 
people will find new homes at, at some point in time, maybe not the next three months, but the next two years. Um, it's also a good time to really, you know, is your personal mission in life, what you're trying to do in life, is it aligned with your mission of the business? Those entrepreneurs that I think have, that are the happiest people that I know, um, that have the best businesses. When I say best, I define it as they're happy in life every day and they're market leaders in their industry. Oftentimes their personal mission is aligned with the business mission. And this is a good time to really reset where are we with that. Um, it's really important to, to look at the quality and integrity of your business balance sheet and your personal balance sheet. You know, one of the things that we, we saw from the 2008 crisis was the notion that, um, you know, that families and, and households and businesses started using less debt, you know, because, the, you know, the debt crisis of 08 was very scary. Um, today, I think you're, one of the, the outcomes that's going to happen is you're going to see uh, individuals and families and businesses have better balance sheets, stronger balance sheets, because this crisis clearly means that the speed of what happened with the number of businesses that got shut down overnight. I mean, I, I was, we were on spring break in Aruba and uh, my, our clients were restaurateurs on Saturday were texting me, the governor was shutting down restaurants and, and bars on Sunday. And it just seemed surreal to me that literally in 24 hours it happened, and, and, but it did. And here we are not even a month away um, and we're living it today. So this, the speed of this, um, and it's, and who knows what else is going to happen. I still think the next 30 to 90 days, it's a lot of what ifs and we don't know. Uh, I do know though, the, those businesses that have strong balance sheets and those individuals that have strong balance sheets, uh, are going to go through this better than those that didn't. And thankfully the government is coming to the rescue of a lot of small businesses. Uh, however, if this lasts really long, there's going to have to be additional stimulus or there'll be more businesses. Uh, that don't make it. And then lastly, um, the quality of your relationship with your bank. Um, that's something that, that we've always preached, that it's important to have a strong relationship with your bank and have a, a very candid and honest relationship with your bank. Uh, today or never, that's going to be the case. Um, as with, with the 2008 crisis, the federal government flooded the banking system with money. <laughs> the idea is the banking system will then flood the landlords and flood businesses with money and, and make credit easier to obtain. And hopefully that is the case. Certainly it's worth starting off that way with the, with the uh, payroll protection program and even the ability to apply for disaster relief uh, loans have changed quite a bit. But I think on a go forward basis, the, um, the ability to, or the relationship with your bank matters. And, and candidly, not just your bank, I think all your suppliers and your vendors, your whole ecosystem, some of these businesses that got shut down, it's going to take some time to reopen. And the quality of relationship with your suppliers is going to matter because they can't, everybody can't open uh, at the same time, at the same day, at the same rate. It's going to, there's going to be uh, a rolling open of some sort. We don't know how that looks, but it's going to happen. And it could even happen per state because I, you know, some states will, will, will fare better than other states to this whole pandemic. So, but in summary of what I'm trying to say in this slide is that I, I think it's an important time to reflect where you were, where you are, and where you want to be. Um, and, and while it's a, I think it's important for you to think about where you want to be long term, it's hard to see that, but I think from a values a position, you can do it. Um, nextly, you know, so how should you grow? So it's time to reset the growth model of your business going forward. So um, I, I just can't stress, this is one of these times that you really want to figure out what are the right questions to ask. And you know, my strong suggestion for those of you out there uh, in business is talk to other entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, in my experience, the last uh, 20 some odd years is, is some of the best uh, feedback and ideas come from talking to other entrepreneurs. Jeff and I have been in the same forum in EO for over 10 years. And, and some of my best, uh, my best questions I ask myself are rooted from what Jeff asked me. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, what questions are the right questions to ask on a go forward basis to understand how should we grow, um, you know, and, and grow considering the financial risks and the people risks and the balance sheet risks that go with it. Uh, and now we have to think about health risks in a more, in a much more material fashion. And one of the things I see entrepreneurs don't always do a very good job of is un uncovering root issues. 
<clears throat> I see oftentimes entrepreneurs will solve symptoms of problems, but they don't actually solve the root issue in part because they're not asking the right questions. So, um, you know, as we all sit here and reflect, you know, what are the root issues in your business today? What are the root issues going to be in the next three months, the next two years? Um, and, and so with that, then it's, it's, you know, it's figuring out the right process to grow. What, what does that look like? Um, and so in our experience, and I, I don't think this has changed at all because of COVID-19, uh, this is something that we've, we've, we've counseled our clients on for a very long time is, you know, to identify that right rate of growth, you got to understand first and foremost, what are your life goals? Now, hopefully, um, while this COVID-19 COVID is certainly going to have long-term impacts on people and families, I mean, I know it's been terrific for us to, uh, as a family being together now for three weeks, and we're actually still smiling and laughing and having fun. Um, we haven't, I know some folks are struggling with that. It hasn't been our case thus far. But long-term, what are your life goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And that's, you know, the, the best businesses, in my experience, the best entrepreneurs are when the, 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 the life goals of the entrepreneur and, and uh, personally in the businesses are aligned. They, they're integrated with each other. So oftentimes people talk about having balance. And balance is tough. Balance, in my mind, is, you know, something has to give and take. Uh, whereas life goals is about integration. Um, and, you know, how do you integrate your business and your, and your personal life and your family life to, to be the best in the world you can be at all the time? It's hard, but that should be the objective. And, and then where are you? What's your stage of life? You know, obviously, uh, somebody who's starting out and uh, single, no kids, different stage of life versus, you know, a person with uh, young family and young family has certain needs uh, versus um, a later stage of life. And so you have to understand, you know, where are you um, and what, you know, and, uh, and how close are you to the rest of your, you know, reaching your life goals. And so um, part of the growth rate of your business is driven by what stage of life you're in. And then lastly, what are your financial resources? <clears throat> and this one's a tricky one because oftentimes one of the things I see, well, I go back and think about entrepreneurs, you know, when they start their businesses, they generally speaking don't have any money and they have a bit of a, a scarcity mentality and how they, they deploy their capital and how they hire people and how they pay people and, and what kind of risks they take. And there's, and what my experience has been those companies that uh, do well over time, the, um, they, they deploy their capital wisely. They were, they took good risks. They took calculated risks. Well then specifically with first generation entrepreneurs, we see this all the time where as time goes on, they have, you know, they start making money and, uh, oftentimes they have a lot of cash in their business. And this is actually when we see people get a little sloppy around um, how they deploy their capital and how they, how, they, how they spend it. And they take risks that really they wouldn't have taken when they had a scarcity mentality because they have an abundance mentality now. So we are often uh, advising our clients that unless you have a very clear, terrific rate of return opportunity in your business, get that money off the business balance sheet and put it on your personal balance sheet. So you continue to operate your business as efficiently as possible and you diversify your liquidity risk. The, um, cause like, and right now is a good example that, you know, money that's stick, sitting in your business, um, or assets that are sitting in your business that's not literal cash doesn't do any good right now unless it's producing income. Yeah, but having money in your personal balance sheet, you can use for leverage in some way, uh, often is, is, is helping companies right now. So, you know, what are your financial resources and how, do the, how does this all blend together? Your life goals and your stage of life and what your financial resources are. And, and it's, it's, um, it's important because as you get older, your patience with your business becomes, um, uh, you become more impatient. And so you want to only do those things that you love doing with your business, which is why it's so important to understand your life goals, understand your financial resources and the stage of life that you're in today. Um, and then what's the right rate of growth? And, you know, with this, once you understand what we just talked about, um, you, you need to have a strategically aligned business plan. And this is something I chuckle after, you know, all these years of doing this. It's, this total marvels uh, or surprises me how few businesses actually have a written business plan. And probably one of the cornerstone things that we see our best clients, again, those that are happiest, 
those that uh, are leaders in their market, and those that are financially successful, all three of those, they have a strategically aligned business plan that they execute to. And it doesn't, you know, as we all know, um, business plans aren't always right, but they have a roadmap, they have a path that reminds them that they're trying to integrate their business with their life goals. Um, reminds them, you know, you know what type, what they're trying to do financially in their business and financially in their personal life. So I just can't stress enough that uh, having a strategic online business plan is, is this cornerstone to really understanding how much risk should we take? How do we grow this business? Um, understand your cash flow needs of your business today and in the future. Um, you know, so many entrepreneurs manage your business on hope. They hope they close this new deal. They hope they get this new client. They hope they get, you know, are able to, to sell the Home Depot. Um, and they take all kinds of risks, um, future or cash flow risks today at the expense of future cash flow. And, and not that you, you shouldn't take risks, you should, but you have to really think about what are the implications and, in, in, you know, I'm going to say this out loud, having cash flow and having profit are two different things. Um, and, you know, one of the early things we teach our, our, our uh, clients in the beginning is understand the difference between cash flow and understand the difference between profit. And so, so specifically, how you grow your business is driven by how you grow your cash. And then the next thing is align your leadership team's compensation with, the, with where you're going, you know, at, with how you're trying to grow your business. And so, um, and, and so many times we see this happen over and over again, that companies pay their leadership team in some arbitrary fashion, either what it took for them to hire somebody in or it took to recruit them over or some industry standard or just some just arbitrary, uh, you know, compensation system. And if you have a strategically aligned business plan and you understand where you're trying to go with your business and you understand what your cash flow is, you can align your leadership, leadership team's compensation and you all get it together with less stress. And in fact, we, and you know, my, uh, uh, I've never been a good artist anyway, and this is actually a drawing I've drawn, <laughs> but these are two companies, and this is arbitrary, but, uh, but not wrong, um, where the tan line you see is inefficient growth where a company A, you know, or a company goes from point A to point B, uh, but often, and the, the tan lines often what we see with um, uh, first insurance entrepreneurs that don't have business plans, and it's, it's volatile. They, they get there, but there's been a lot of pain, a lot of a lot of angst, um, uh, a lot of financial risk, and you know maybe some people relationships that that got burned along the way. Whereas if you really understand how to grow your company with purpose, you know again why are you doing it? And how are you doing it that there's less volatility, less volatility in every way, every, you know, from the people and the financial um, and even for that matter, who you're serving, you know, who's buying your products and services that you can probably serve them better when you're going with purpose versus inefficient growth. And so admittedly, this is easier said than done, but so many entrepreneurs don't even think about this. And, and again, I know I'm repeating myself on this topic, but we're all being reflective right now all being reflective of you know, where we're we trying to go. This is a great time to sit down and reset. Where am I trying to go in my life and in my business? So the benefits of, of growing at the right rate, um, number one, and you likely don't overpay people. Um, now, you know, this market environment is going to be interesting. This is why I go back down to, you know, looking at this in three time frames, the next, you know, month to three months, the next two years, and then um, after that, and I don't know what's going to happen with the with the uh, the whole labor market. Obviously, the labor market was extremely strong going in, into this, and and it's pretty likely that businesses aren't going to be able to hire back in the B curve. Um, and frankly, there's a lot of employees and they want a different relationship with their business all all together. And with that in mind, you know, the whole compensation system may be disrupted. Um, but when you're growing at the right rate. And historically, at least, you don't overpay for people because you have you're hiring people who are aligned with where you're trying to go. Not that you never do it; it just it, you, you minimize that risk. Um, your hiring plans easier to execute, and less expensive. Uh, I can't tell you how many folks I know that have hired in anticipation of business that that's going to happen, or uh, they're they're 
the, the, the flip side where they're paying people, you know, a ton of overtime because they didn't anticipate properly the growth they're going to have. So it cuts both ways. But by, by understanding your rate of growth, it helps you decide um, how to hire, who to hire, when to hire, and how much to pay them. Um, I also see this quite a bit. You don't need equity owners. Um, so many times entrepreneurs, when they're, when they're in a high growth phase, they feel they have to go uh, raise equity capital. Um, and it's just, just, and oftentimes that's just a disaster because uh, equity capital, as we all know, is most expensive. And, and I'm aware we all look to those, those superstar uh, situations that where people invested in startups that became Facebook, that became Google. <clears throat> those are so rare. Most small businesses uh, spend so much time seeking outside financing, equity financing, that they put themselves out of business. Or uh, worse, they get the wrong partners because they're not aligned with their values, their company values or personal values. And I really, really believe that if you think about growth, and, and, and again, you, you, know, you think about eliminating the volatility of this growth, that you, you can, most businesses, not all, can, uh, there are certain applications where you have to seek outside capital. Um, you can grow, you can, you can organically finance and finance with the bank. Now, admittedly, we may be in a different paradigm right now. I think uh, raising equity capital for old ideas is going to be hard to do. I think raising capital for new ideas, such as virus-free surfaces and, and you know, rethinking the hospital system, I think there's going to be a ton of money and it's going to be easily available. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, if you're in a, in a business that is the same business you were three months ago, it may be hard. Um, and so the rate of growth really matters. Also, growing at the right rate, you minimize your execution risk. Um, you can align your operational excellence um, with, you know, marketing and sales. And, and that's, you know, for any business, we know how tricky it is to do that. And, and when you're growing at a rate that you're controlling, which, by the way, uh, said differently, that oftentimes means you're saying no to customers. You're saying no to, um, uh, you know, certain, certain marketing channels and to, to grow at the right rate. And that's hard to do. I, I know it's hard to do. When we, when we made our transition to work only with first generation entrepreneurs, we said no to a lot of business and it took me a long time to get used to it. It was the best thing we did for our business from the standpoint we focused exactly on what we do and who we serve and how we serve them and actually started really controlling our growth. Um, but it's been the right decision for us long term. And, and also, for those of you that have space requirements, and again, this is all going to change with technology and what's happening today, and what does a safe working environment look like in the future, but you can plan for your physical growth space on a much more thoughtful basis. I know uh, the last few years, particularly in the Midwest, and or in the Midwest, and specifically in Ohio, you know, the actual availability of space has been very difficult and expensive for people. So, um, you know, Thinking about how you grow, what that looks like, it helps you control uh, your expense on real estate and, and, and how you grow. So, some myths to dispel, and you know, this this was done prior to the COVID nineteen, and, and, and thinking about this presentation, I still feel these are are pretty relevant. That you know, first the market's overrated. Now maybe that'll be different um, with some of the new healthcare problems we have to solve. Um, you know, 47% 40, of first movers fail compared to 8% of improvers. Um, as I just talked about a little bit, equity is required for fast growth and the founder diluted the point where it's not worth it. And not every business is Facebook, Google, or Tesla. So much as I love Tesla, the jury's still out on how that, that, how that plays out. I want them to win. I think it's a great company. Uh, it's just interesting how they finance their growth at this point in time. Um, you can grow slower in the beginning to end up in the same place or better with less pain. Not every business grows like a J curve. Um, and, and I think you gotta, you gotta get your mind away from that. And, and again, I go back to the original slide I showed you around the intoxicating stage of uh, being in business. I mean, that's, that's what happens. You're, you're intoxicated. It feels awesome and you're excited and you want to grow as fast as you can and get as many people to experience your, your, your product or service and know your company and, uh, that can be dangerous. And, and again, it's really hard when you're in that intoxicating stage to, to say no to things. So, um, and then lastly, and, and, and again, this was written before the whole COVID-19 thing is um, don't dismiss the importance of opportunity costs. And, and, and 
And, uh, you know, shiny objects can be a bad distraction. And right now we have a lot of shiny objects in our, uh, right in front of us. And they're different type of shiny objects. They're challenging shiny objects, but they're right in front of us. And um, I, I really do believe this is a time to sit down and really revisit, you know, what, what does the future look like for you? And reset and rethink your growth and how you do it. Um, and the good news, I mean, one of the things that I've experienced so far in this, you know, in this whole crisis that we're in is people are patient and people are forgiving and people are um, recognizing that this is the first time for everybody. And, and we're all trying to figure it out together. I mean, and I love it that it's, for, you know, for, for bad reasons, but we are all coming together as a country and people with lots of differences and, um, and, I, and we're trying to get to the same place in a, in a, in a great way. And so, um, you know, sitting down and thinking about what the future looks like, where we can all, we can all win, um, I think is, uh, is, is a good time to do it. So a good opportunity right now. <laughs> Lastly, for those that want to connect with us, here's all of our information. Um, Jeff, I, I, I think that's my, well, I'm 36 minutes. We don't have much more to say. Don't know if, uh, what happens now with those questions, but I'll let you take over from here. Sure. So we, we can entertain questions from the audience. I would uh, prefer it if you would enter them through the chat channel. Uh, just following up on a uh, couple of things that you said that uh, triggered thoughts on my end. How does one stay safe and how does one have fun? And you, that was early in your talk, but I, those things are things we haven't talked about uh, uh, in this event yet. Like, yeah, you know, it's in, I think that, the, you know, living in Columbus and having gone to Ohio State, talking to and being an Ohio State football fan, so don't judge me. Um, you know, we we're talking about what's going to happen with Ohio State football. And, uh, you know, there's, there's going to have to be a rethink around how we watch sports in general um, and, and what that looks like. And so um, I, that's what, where I get excited. Um, and I really, I, I've been on America 100% of the time in this one right now is that we're going to figure out how to do this. We're going to figure out um, safe ways to have fun and safe ways to recreate. I mean, there's, you know, let's not forget, we are still a capitalistic country. We have capitalism works and, and we're going to figure out um, how to do this in a safe environment. I, I don't have those answers today, but I know there's going to be answers. Um, there's, there's too many people that care about this too much and, 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 and commerce matters in America. I mean, it's one of the interesting conversations that I'm not going to leave today is that you know, I've heard people ask the question, is the cure of the problem worse than the, than the actual problem itself with the COVID-19 issue? And, um, you, you know, the, and because that question is even, even a real question, uh, I think you're going to see lots of innovation around this. And because we're still going to have fun. We're still going to recreate. Uh, we're still going to have our American pastimes and traditions. It's just going to be done differently. Yeah. Uh, and one could also say that this, situation has revealed systematic vulnerabilities that we might not have been aware of before. Well, you know, it's, I think, I think Jeff, <laughs> we were probably aware of them. They were called conspiracy theories, right? Um, and, and I think people, uh, you know, I, I, I know there's people who have talked about uh, viruses I and mean, there's two movies out there, Pandemic and whatever the other one is. Um, so it's not like we were unaware, it's just that we, they, they weren't real. Um, and now it's very real. And so now, now, what's interesting is that, again, where I get excited about innovation and business in this country, and, and listen, we, you know, America is still positioned to lead the world around this, um, that there's going to be not only solutions to this problem, but the identification of other problems that could happen that maybe, maybe aren't cons conspiracy theories, uh, and, and there'll be solutions to those problems, too. So we'll figure it out, and we'll figure it out. I mean, that's one of the things that... Uh, I was reading that, you know, I think the next three to six months are going to, you know, include five years of progress because people are going to move so quickly in trying to solve this. Partly out of necessity, but partly out of opportunity. Uh, I've got a question from the audience that says, if our employees are not truly living our company's values, how do we reconcile letting people go in this climate? 
You know, that's a really great question. And letting people go is, is never, 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 never easy. Um, I think, uh, I, I think that the, the conversation, I mean, first of all, you don't have to let them go today. Um, that's one of the things that I've learned myself over time is you don't have to let them go immediately. You can have a plan to let them go. I mean, it's just, you know, time's gone on. We've had people leave us. Um, I think only once did we have somebody leave us, on, you know, two weeks notice or whatever it was. I think other times it's been three months, six months. And in the last, you know, several times it's been, we do it together. So again, and I, I, I say this very literally, just because somebody doesn't live your values does not mean they're a bad person. It just can't be their best person in your environment, which doesn't mean you're a bad person either. But I think having, I mean, it's supernatural to have the conversation today because everything's changed. Um, and, and so I think having the conversation, if, and if, if time's right for them to leave, there are programs, there's more programs out there today than there were, um, there were you know, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Um, I believe, and I may be the minority person on this belief, but uh, I believe there's going to be more opportunity, not less. I really do. And I think it's going to be here sooner than people think. Um, and, and lastly, if you, know, you don't want to let them go today, just develop a plan. It could be six months. It could be nine months. It could be a year. Uh, but develop a win-win plan that has milestones, by the way. I mean, it's not a free-for-all where that person is not living your values. They can't just show up and not work and do things. They have to try. If they can't, if they can't do that, then, then let them go now. But, um, but it's just an open and honest conversation. And, and, and by the way, they know it, they know it too. They know it too. And it's, you're doing each other a favor. One of my um, former employees used to tell or told me that we owe it for those employees who aren't living our values. We owe it to them, you know, to them, to tell them and find a solution that's win-win. Either you coach them up in your organization, or you coach them out. Either one's okay. Just do it nicely, do it humanly. Yeah, I've I've personally experienced that early in my career, where one of my clients had a worker that was lying about work that was allegedly done but wasn't done, and I got them to fire the, the, this woman who was doing that, and there was some resistance then because they didn't like the firing process, and her reaction to when when they, the the manager had the conversation was, "Thank you, I didn't want to be here." Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's it's not easy. It's not fun, but I think that for the benefit of everybody, it's important. Uh, another question we've been given from the audience: How do we juggle our personal mission, which is changing a lot right now, uh, with our mission with the business, which could also be changing? Yeah, yeah. So that's a good question, and you know, I would challenge how much the personal mission is really changing, quote unquote. Um, I think this is where I said earlier, it's so important to get down to root issues of really what matters the most. And I know from our client experience that um, people may perceive there's some changes, but when you get down to the root issue, it really matters. There, there generally isn't. Um, and I think for businesses, we're all going to be forced to change in some way. I mean, I, I, at least I don't know what that looks like yet, but um, you know, the whole, you know, doing business safely or safe business is going to be real. Uh, I mean, it already is real. Um, and that's going to continue to change. So I think, and, 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 and this is a really good question because I don't, what I don't want to do is that I think the recognition of these changes are important. You can begin, begin solving for them, but it's not going to happen overnight. It may take you a year, it may take you two years, it may take you 18 months. That's okay. But start asking those root questions. Start trying to get your arms around the right questions. And I think that's what's so hard for all of us, me included. I can speak for myself that, you know, I feel that the, the last three weeks has been a whipsaw where I haven't had, I know it's been important to sit down and create time to ask those questions, but I haven't had the opportunity because of the volume of work organizationally we're doing and, and trying to reconfigure our own office to be safe and, and our own environment uh, with our employees to be safe and, and their clients. So, uh, but I think, you know, don't beat yourself up that it has to be done immediately. You have some time, but, but, but be diligent and focus on it. Do you think there's a chance that this will reveal that some people's values on their wall aren't their real values? Oh, for sure. There's no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of folks that have had these 
fluffy unicorn values around that, that really are they're not, they're not real. Um, that was a, one of the very first things I did was I went and really, really thought about our values. And, um, you know, our second, you know, our first is be present, be positive, um, which I know is technically two, but we really call it one. You know, be positive and be present in this environment was hard to do. And in our, in our daily calls, I mean, it's one of the things I talked about. Like we had to, there's a lot of bad news out there and there's a lot of scary news out there. And if you let yourself absorb all that scary news, uh, you're, you're not going to be present and you're sure not going to be positive. Um, you know, the, the, the second, our second value is a uh, bold pursuit of excellence. And, you know, that, that still stands and it's important. And, and you know, excellence is going to mean something a little different in the future for us because conducting business safely is going to be part of excellence. And, and our fourth, our third is uh, living with entrepreneurship. And our, our fourth is healthy sense of urgency. Now, that word healthy, you know, we spent a day arguing over about including that word in our, our value. Um, and I'm trying to get my arms around what does healthy mean right now in terms of sense of urgency because there's so many urgent issues right now we're trying to solve for and tr really trying to identify what's healthy and what's not and what does healthy look like in the future. So, but yeah, Jeff, I mean, you know this as good as anybody. I think there's a lot of fluffy values out there that people should rethink. And it's the right time to rethink it. Was it literally the first thing I did? One of the first things I did. Yeah, I've I've certainly experienced a lot of companies that they have values that aren't real, or they uh, made them up and they don't pay any attention to them, et cetera. And if they're not living in the in the culture and in the company, then they're not serving you. They're not helping you in any way. Well, I know you're the right guy to help people fix their values. You're you're one of the best in the world at doing that. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I know, we've, by the way, Randy and I have known each other for many years and we get together quarterly in person and we'll see the next time that's going to happen. My prediction is that it's going to be uh, a, a Zoom meeting of some sort. Uh, maybe maybe uh, every other time will be in person, but I, my prediction is next time is going to be a Zoom meeting. I, I think uh, you don't need a big crystal ball for that. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I think we're out of questions. Great. Thank you for sharing your, your experience with us. Uh, you've got your contact information, I'm sure. Uh, one thing that Randy did not say is he's got a wealth of information uh, and support resources that are not financial that he helps his clients with. Yeah, the, the wealth management piece has come, become a little incidental to our business, uh, whereas the business consulting and identifying how to grow the company with business um, um, or with purpose is really become the, the, the cornerstone of what we do. So thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Lauren. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And stay safe and have a good day. Very good. Thank you. And we'll have a two-minute break, and then Will will come on for guiding us through the rest of our break. <laughs>